Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. Um, and my guest today is Kristen Bauer, who is a member of the Arlington Human Rights Commission. Um, we are going to be talking um, specifically about an event um, that is happening uh, here in Arlington around the issue of gun violence and hate. And we want to talk about that very naughty, very complex topic uh, with Kristen for the majority of the time uh, that that we're chatting here today. But first of all, Kristen, I'm sorry, I should have welcomed you already. And do I do thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. We really do appreciate you taking the time. Um, I do want to just ask, though, a little bit about yourself personally um, before we get into the conversation um, that we are going to be generally focused on. And the reason for that is that here at Talk of the Town, we like to combine uh, both uh, getting a sense of who a person who is doing something interesting in town, uh, who, who that person is, how he or she is, uh, as well as then focusing on the work and contributions that they make here in town. Um, so I understand that you are an Arlington resident, but I know that you're your Arlington residency has been somewhat unusual. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about uh, about your own background? Sure. So um, my husband and I first came to Arlington uh, in the 1980s. We bought a house here. We were lawyers working in the Boston area. Uh, but about two years afterwards, I joined the Foreign Service and we went overseas then for 30 years. Um, and then with the advent of the previous president, I had to leave. And we had a house in Arlington. So we came back here and uh, we're very pleased to have such a welcoming community to come back to. Um, and we are pleased to welcome you back. Um, but uh, 30 years in foreign service, I shared with you uh, just before we went on air that I also was, uh, you know, spent most of my youth outside of the country. It really does do a lot to mold a person's uh, values and, and kind of perspective on this country and the world, et cetera. If you don't mind, uh, where, you know, where are, uh, where are the places that you were stationed? And if there are too many, just, you know, pick a couple. <laughs> um, we were very fortunate. We served in a, in a lot of different places in Africa, in Europe, and mostly in Asia, mostly in Southeast Asia. Uh, so the most recent place I was in was uh, Myanmar, Burma. Uh, wow. But we had a, a wide variety of experiences. Our children got an opportunity to learn a lot of different uh, aspects of different cultures. Uh, so we had a we had a really excellent time, and of course we're representing the United States and um, a lot of the the virtues of the United States to others. Mm hmm. And what kind of I mean, if you don't mind my asking, what kind of work were you doing? And also was you were you were saying we does that mean both your husband and yourself were involved in the Foreign Service? Well, I think you probably appreciate when you're overseas, the whole family is a representative of uh, the United States. Uh, my husband was not a Foreign Service officer. He worked as an attorney for some uh, law firms overseas. Um, and my work initially was as an economic officer. So uh, for example, in South Africa, I helped um, certain communities start up um, entrepreneurship programs and things like that. Um, but later in time, I w became what was called a deputy chief of mission. So essentially you, you run embassies and I did a lot of that in Southeast Asia, um, Burma, Indonesia, Laos, places like that. Wow. Um... I, I could spend uh, the remaining time in this segment um, just talking to you more about that. I'm going to have to restrain myself and perhaps we'll have you back at another time uh, with that as the focus. Um, but of course, uh, we are here today because on Thursday, uh, September 23rd, uh, the Human Rights Commission here in Arlington is going to be uh, sponsoring uh, a community conversation, um, the topic of which, as I mentioned at the outset, is that intersection of gun, guns and hate, gun violence. Um, that that is, um, you know, that is an, an inevitable. It feels like part of that intersection. Um, 
so what I'd like to ask you, first of all, is just to describe uh, the event, um, who will be participating, and what the content and thrust of it will be. Yeah, so the event is tomorrow at 7 p.m. It is virtual. Anybody can sign up through the Human Rights Commission website or the town website. And it's basically, it's a conversation about gun violence, especially about that intersection uh, between guns and hate, why guns make that so much more deadly. We're very fortunate to have great speakers. We have our Arlington uh, Police Department chief who will be speaking, as well as uh, another Arlington resident and deputy uh, leader of the Massachusetts Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, as well as an Every Town Survivor Fellow and some other commissioners. And of course, we'll take questions from the audience. So we're hoping it'll be a real conversation. Um, the Human Rights Commission is focusing on gun violence through the lens of human rights because we believe that you can't really exercise your human rights, say rights to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, uh, if there's gun violence that naturally limits your exercise of those rights. Um, and, you know, I think that that you may have gotten these questions, certainly ones that arose uh, to my mind uh, when I first heard about the event has to do, you know, have to do with, okay, why at this moment or why, why, why now? It seems again, it's not, it's certainly not that it's, it's not relevant. Uh, that's not my implication at all because no. it seems perpetually relevant. Uh, but, but why now and, and why Arlington? Can you address those questions? Yeah, so on the why now, I mean, you're right. We could be doing this every month. Unfortunately, it is relevant every single uh, moment, it seems like, in the United States. But I think we are particularly concerned because the sales of guns, uh, as people may well know, has really spiked during the COVID pandemic. And here in Massachusetts, the, the sales of guns went up 24% in 2020. So that's a steep rise, and that means it's very likely that there are more guns in homes in Arlington than there have ever been before. And another reason um, to have this event in September is that September is uh, National Suicide Awareness Month. And as you may know, about 60% of gun deaths are suicides in the United States. So it's a moment to reflect on, on that fact and on the uh, challenges of suicide in our community. Yeah, a couple of things that you just said that I want to follow up, follow up on. I was reading uh, recently um, a couple of long articles about um, gun violence and specifically the connection to suicide, number one, and number two, uh, the, the spike, as you have referred to it, um, around the country um, in gun purchases um, over the last year and a half, including a lot of people for whom uh, they were buying guns for the first time, not, not adding guns to an existing collection. Um, and I am struck by the fact that uh, you, you mentioned here in Massachusetts, 24%. That is not as high as the average uh, around the country, I noticed. But nonetheless, for Massachusetts uh, and for Arlington, uh, that is an eye-popping uh, number, uh, again, in a single year. And that leads to the second point, in, because as you said, that means more guns in more homes in Arlington. And uh, as I understand it, data points very clearly to the fact that in many instances, having a gun or guns in the house makes, makes is more dangerous uh, for those who live there rather than less. Uh, you had mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, the, the incidence of suicide um, in terms of guns is, is, is very notable. But I also have noticed that uh, guns are the chosen means uh, for people to kill themselves quite often as well. There's a very high percentage of suicides that, you know, or, you know, guns are involved. So these are, uh, you know, clearly those are very compelling reasons to have this conversation now and 
to continue it uh, as long as 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 we need as as need be. Yeah, I think um, you had also asked, you know, sort of why Arlington. I think that framework sort of already says it, but just to expand on it a little bit more, um, gun violence in this country really is an epidemic. And from having been overseas so long and coming back, I was kind of shocked at how complacent people are accepting of these kind of levels of gun violence. Um, but I think we've all learned epidemics don't respect borders. Epidemics go and gun violence is just like that. And people from Arlington are not immune to domestic violence. They're not immune to suicide. People in Arlington go to work. They go to uh, houses of worship. They go to nightclubs. They go to places where we have seen gun violence um, erupt. So I think the risk of gun violence um, is serious and um, important for people in Arlington to think about. I think tomorrow our um, Arlington Police Department chief will be able to give us more, you know, very granular specifics on, on Arlington. But I think in general, um, we can just appreciate that, that gun violence easily crosses borders and easily impacts people living in Arlington. And then just to pick up on a point you said about access to guns, if guns are in the home, um, in fact, that does increase the risk of suicide three times just by having a gun in the home. And one other piece about having guns in the home is there are a lot of unintended shootings that take place because usually because a child has gained access to an unsecured weapon uh, in the home. So again, that the presence of a gun in a home does create a higher risk for all the people living in that home. Yeah, as you were just referencing, accidental discharge is, seems to be, again, another all too common uh, phenomenon in homes in which there are guns. And as you said, uh, curious children. Um, and uh, so all kinds of tragedies can ensue. You know, as I was listening to you um, speak to the fact that epidemics no, have no boundaries and guns and guns in America certainly seems to qualify uh, as an epidemic in many ways. I also was thinking, oh, what a what an appropriate analogy for why this is important for Arlington, even if we don't see a lot of incidences here in town or hear about them. Um, it's the analogy is to climate change, right? Because we are part of a larger, a very, you know, a increasing concentric circles, uh, you know, in which we, you know, our actions impact others and, and we are impacted by the actions of others. And we have a real compelling reason, even if we are a green community and, you know, uh, far ahead in certain measures uh, compared to others around environmental responsibility, in, in responsibility et cetera, uh, excuse me. Um, nonetheless, we can't, we, we can't stop being vigilant and active and proactive in this way. And it feels like you're right. Uh, we may not be being directly touched by gun violence here in this town at right now. Um, but the potential always exists. And if we are allowing this creep uh, or surge, in fact, of uh, guns into our homes uh, and into our neighborhoods, et cetera, it, it, it feels like the hammer is, you know, about to fall at any point. And I would just say that, you know, there's there's a question of empathy for those who are particularly maybe disproportionately impacted uh, by gun violence. So when we were talking about that intersection of guns and hate, um, a couple areas that come to mind are guns and domestic violence. Each month, over 50 American women are shot and killed by an intimate partner. So that's sort of one area. Another area are guns and anti-LGBTQ plus hate um, where there's just a, a staggering amount of violence. And I, I want to share, I know statistics are always hard to sort of take in, but this is a statistics that stuck with me because it's, it's so shocking. So 5% of non-LGBTQ 
uh, young people have been threatened with a weapon on school property. But that number rises to 17% for gay and lesbian youth and 21% for transgender youth. So these are people threatened on school property with a weapon. So that's another huge area. And then, of course, another enormous area is um, guns and race. I think we all know that um, gun violence disproportionately, city gun violence, for example, disproportionately impacts communities of color. Um, in Massachusetts, Black children and teens are seven times more likely to die by guns um, than their white peers. So these are all, I mean, we could go on at great length about all these different areas and their, their topics that will be covered um, in more detail on thir uh, tomorrow. Um, but just to, to elaborate a little bit more on some of the different aspects. Yeah, I'm really glad that you did uh, bring that up in, in that way, um, because I what I hear you saying is, uh, why Arlington and why now? Well, among other reasons, because we care because we care about people beyond ourselves. Um, and, you know, we need to demonstrate both solidarity and support and, um, and, and again, try and do what we can, even if we ourselves, again, for the moment, because things can change at any moment, as we know, and tragedy can strike anywhere, um, for the moment, we might feel somewhat insulated as a community from this kind of thing, because again, it's not something we read about in the paper very often. It's not something you find in the police logs or anything like that here in Arlington uh, with any, again, with any kind of regularity. None of that is uh, is to say that we can't also take a stand here and do, again, more than we currently are. Uh, simply in support of those populations that are more vulnerable and are disproportionately affected in the way that you've just described. Yeah, and I think there are um, lots of things people can do. I think like climate change, you had made a parallel before, sometimes that issue seems overwhelming, but there are things we can do right here in, in Arlington. Similarly, with gun violence, which is also a very complex and in some cases may feel overwhelming kind of problem. There are things, simple steps we can do right here and right now. And yeah, and you you anticipated my next question beautifully. Um, so please go ahead and let us know maybe a couple of, of those and with the understanding again that uh, on the event on the 23rd, th this will be covered in, in, in much greater detail. Yeah, and I think people will have um, different perspectives uh, tomorrow. So I really encourage everybody to, to tune in and listen. But I think for me, um, some simple things that come readily to mind are, one, if you're a gun owner, securing your weapon safely. And there are ways to do this, um, and it can just... Uh, help so much in issues of unintentional shootings or suicides or other things like that. Um, another one is if you're a parent and you have a child going on a play date or maybe they're going on a sleepover, ask the host, do they have a gun? If they have a gun, is it secure? Just like you might ask, do they have a swimming pool? Does it have a gate around it? Do they have uh, animals in the home? Um, so just make that one of the questions that you ask. Um, Another one that's always important is just to be informed about the topic. Um, I knew from being overseas, there was a huge problem with gun violence in the United States, but I didn't really understand it. And it wasn't until I started looking at some of these um, statistics, figures, and heard from survivors that it really um, struck me. So I would encourage, um, in addition to joining our conversation tomorrow, um, just to delve into it, there are lots of different organizations that have um, information uh, for whatever aspects might be most interesting for you. And then I do want to mention that the Arlington Police Department is running a No Questions Asked gun buyback program on October 3rd uh, for anybody who has unwanted weapons uh, that they would like to dispose of. So those are just a, a few quick ones, um, but there will be lots more tomorrow. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, we keep on referencing uh, tomorrow's event. And again, we are speaking on September 22nd. The event itself is September 23rd. Of course, a lot of the a lot of what we've been talking about here uh, will resonate, uh, hopefully, with our audience as important, you know, uh, within the event and then beyond the event. Um, so, um but let me ask you, 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 you were just saying you can join us for our conversation. Um, how can somebody who's interested in joining the conversation tomorrow do so? So there are two ways. One is to go to the town website and just click on the calendar for the 23rd and you'll see a uh, conversation intersection of guns and hate. You can click on that and register there, or you can go to the Arlington human rights website, a Human Rights Commission website. So it's exactly arlingtonhumanrightscommission.org and look under events. You'll see this event. Again, you can click on it, get to the link to register, and then you'll get the Zoom link and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Right. So just to, you know, to be clear, although Kristen really just, you know, probably made made this crystal clear so or Kristen clear. Um, uh, but it is a webinar, um, so a virtual event, obviously, and that means, of course, that uh, you know that there is no limit to those who can uh, can tune in and participate, um, and that's one of the boons of living the world in the world that we've been living in for these last uh, oh boy, <laughs> now closing in on two years, it feels like. Um, all right. Is there anything, Kristen, um, that we have failed to mention that we should um, or that occurs to you before we let you go? Maybe I can just leave with one final thought. So guns are the fourth leading cause of death for um, children and teens in Massachusetts. I really think if we work together, we can change that. So I look forward to working with everybody to really make a difference on this issue. Um, a sobering um, and dramatic um, piece of, 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 of data to leave us with and to leave the audience. Um, you know, again, I think with, with the last reminder uh, of why this is so important uh, here in Arlington right now and each and every day until and unless uh, we get to a better place um, in this country around um, our obsession, it feels like, with guns. Um, I have been speaking with Kristen Bauer, who uh, is going to be part of the uh, Human Rights Commission uh, officers and, and, uh, and members who will be participating in uh, the event around gun violence and the intersection of guns and hate. Uh, sponsored by the Human, Arlington Human Rights Commission, taking place on Thursday, September 23rd, starting at 7 p.m., uh, just to be clear. Anyway, thank you so much for your time, Kristen, and um, best of luck with uh, tomorrow night's event. Um, I'm sure that it's going to have an impact, and thank you for doing it. Um, thank you. This has been Talk of the Town. I am James Milan. We really appreciate Kristen's time. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.